Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and we're continuing our series of linear relationships. Today's lesson is going to be writing equations from tables. Okay, in our previous lessons, we've started writing equations, and we've been writing them in the form of y equals ax, where you're multiplying x by some number a, or y equals x plus a, where you're adding a number to x. So this was the multiplicative, and this referred to the additive relationships. Okay, as you can tell, these are one-step equations. In this equation, we're only multiplying. In this equation on the right, we're just adding a number. In today's lesson, we're going to delve into seventh grade material, and we're gonna learn how to write two-step equations, meaning equations that have more than one operation equations that could have multiplication and addition in it. And I think these are fun, so hopefully you'll have fun too. Okay, make sure you have your notes and you'll need to go through, write everything down. We're gonna start by learning about the steps to writing an equation from a table. Um, I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of information. It's gonna be kind of confusing. But that's okay, don't worry about it. Once we start doing the examples, I think you'll get the hang of it. Okay, step number one. Find the rate of change. Identify how the y values change when the x values change by one. Okay, rate of change means how is x changing every time y, I'm sorry, the rate of change is how is y changing every time x changes by one. That's the rate of change. And this answer, this will be the coefficient of the x variable. This rate of change is what you're multiplying x by, okay? And there's a special way that we find the rate of change. I think you'll like this. Um, we're gonna write the rate of change in fraction format. And that was not a very good line, was it? So in the numerator, we're going to write a little triangle, y. And then in the denominator, we have another triangle, x. And this is read the change in y over the change in x. So the triangles represent change. We're going to write the change in y over the change in x. And be careful, don't mix them up. Y goes first. Y goes in the numerator. Step number two. Determine if an additional amount needs to be added or subtracted to get the correct Y value in the table. Okay, sometimes you're gonna do, need to do more than just multiplying. And you're gonna have to add something or subtract something. That's where the second step comes in. Okay, this amount, this additional amount that you add or subtract, this is gonna be the constant in the equation. <coughs> Excuse me. And the third step is you're going to use the rate of change and the constant value to write an equation for the relationship between X and Y. And this is the equation that we're going to use. This is the seventh grade equation. Y equals KX plus B. K is the coefficient to X. It is the rate of change. So up here next to rate of change, I want you to write K. K is the rate of change. It is the coefficient of the X variable. And then plus the B. The B is the constant. So over here where it says constant, go ahead and write the letter B. This is that amount that you're gonna add or subtract. This is the constant. So this is the equation that we're going to be writing. Please make sure you have it written down, or it's the form we're gonna be using. You're gonna write it in exactly the same form, y equals, and you're gonna replace the k and the b with the values that we find. So the y and the x are gonna stay a y and an x. It's the k and the b that we're looking for, and that's what's gonna make our equation. Okay, if you're confused, don't worry. Let's go ahead and do some practice. Okay, our first practice problem. Okay, we have a table, and I know we talked about the input and the output. Okay, so here's the input-output table. This table actually has a process column to help us show our work, to do our work. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is find the rate of change. Every time you see rate of change, I want you to get in the habit of writing the change in Y over the change in X. This is how we're gonna find the rate of change. 
So I'm going to come to my table. I want to find the change in y. So I'm going to pick two y values. Okay, it doesn't matter where on the table I pick it. I'm going to pick these two, 8 and 13. And I need to find the change. How does it change when y goes from 8 to 13? It's increasing. How much is it increasing by? It's increasing by 5. So it's a positive 5. So 5 is going to be my numerator. Then my denominator. is going to be the change in x. So I come over here. I have to use the same corresponding x values as the values I used for y. I'm not going to use the 8 and 13 for y and then use a 3 and a 5 for x. I have to use the same corresponding values. So I want to find the change between the 1 and the 2. It is increasing. How much is it increasing by? Just 1. So my denominator is going to be a 1. So my rate of change is 5 over 1. We simplify. 5 over 1 equals 5. This is my rate of change. This is my coefficient to my equation. This is my k. Hope you can see the k. Um, now we're going to go back up here. So our equation is going to be in the form of y equals kx plus b. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I know my k is 5. And my process. I'm going to multiply my rate of change, my 5, times the x value. So 5 times 1 equals 5. But I don't need a 5. My y value needs to be an 8. So what additional amount do I need to add to the 5 to make it 8? I need to add 3, don't I? 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 equals 8. That's what we want. The important part is you need to check it, make sure this is correct. So pick another x value. I'm going to pick the 4. So I'm going to multiply my rate of change 5 times 4, and then I'm going to add 3. So 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. And that's exactly what we want to have is 23. So this is the right expression. So my expression is that I'm going to multiply 5 times x, and then I have to add 3. That's my expression. Or you can think of this as being the rule. And then to make the equation look like our format up here, all we have to do is add a y equals in front of our expression. So y equals 5x plus 3. That is our equation. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, next example, again, here's our table. We've got the x values, the y values. We have a process area. Let's go ahead and write our equation. y equals kx plus b. This is the format we want our equation to take. First thing we need to do is find the rate of change. Oops, rate of change. That's the change in y over the change in x. So let's pick two values for y. I'm going to stick with the first two. It's just easiest. I'm increasing from 10 to 13, so that means I'm increasing by 3. I'm adding 3. So my change in y is 3. Let's find the change in x. I need to use the corresponding x values. So to go from 4 to 5, I'm increasing by 1. So my rate of change is 3 over 1, which simplifies to 3. This is my k. Okay, the rate of change is my k. That's what I'm going to multiply x by. So let's go ahead and fill in a number for x. Let's use 4. I'm going to multiply 3 times my x value of 4, and that's going to give me a 12. But my y value has to be a 10. So how can I go from 12 to 10? Subtract 2, right? 12 minus 2 is 10. All right, let's try another number, another x value, to make sure that this is the correct rule here. So I'm going to use 8. So I'm going to take my rate of change 3, and I'm going to multiply it by 8, and then I'm going to subtract 2. So 3 times 8 is 24, minus 2 equals 22, and that's exactly what we need. So this is the right expression here. We're going to multiply, let's write the expression down here, we're going to use 3 as our multiplier. That's our rate of change. We're going to multiply it by x. And then we're going to subtract 2. 
This is our expression or the rule. And to write the equation, we're just going to add in the y equals. So y equals 3x minus 2. And that's all there is to it. So we have two more examples. The tables are a little bit different here. Instead of going vertically, we're now going to be going horizontally, but everything else is going to be the same. It gives us a little process area. Sometimes you won't have this process row or the process column, and you'll have to do the work to your side or you can make your own. Um, if you like to try this on your own, then just pause the video. If you want to see work another one with me, then just continue listening and working the problem. Okay, first we're going to find the rate of change. Rate of change, we need to write it. The change in y over the change in x. This is our k value. So I'm going to start with y. It's so easy to go up here to the top row, but that's the x. We need to start with the y. I'm going to use the first two values, 1 and 3. I'm increasing, going from 1 to 3, which means I'm increasing by 2. So 2 is my numerator. Then my change in x is going to be my denominator. I'm going to use the corresponding x values. Going from 1 to 2, I'm increasing by 1. So my rate of change is 2 over 1, which equals 2. This is my multiplier. Remember, our equation is going to be in the format of y equals kx plus b. So this is our k. So I'm going to go and multiply x by my 2. I'm going to go ahead and pick this 1. If I do 2 times 1, I get 2. But I need it to be 1. So how do I go from a 2 to a 1? I'm decreasing, so I'm going to have to subtract. Subtract 1. There's not a lot of room, I apologize. So let's see if this works for another one. I'll try the 5. I'm going to do 2, my rate of change, 2. I'm going to multiply it by 5, and then I'm going to subtract 1. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 1 equals 9. So it works. So our expression is to multiply x by 2, and then subtract 1. To write our equation, we're just going to put a y equals in front of it. y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, I for sure want you to try the last one on your own. Pause the video, work the problem out, show your work, come back and check. <coughs> okay, let's see how you did. The rate of change, the change in y over the change in x. I'm going to use my y values, my first two down here, 7 and 15. I'm increasing by 8. That is my numerator. My denominator is the change in x, so I use the corresponding x values. I'm going from 1 to 3, so I'm increasing by 2. 8 over 2 simplifies to 4, because this is the same as 8 divided by 2. So my rate of change, or my k, is 4. So this is my multiplier. So let me come back up here. When x is 1 and I multiply it by 4, I get 4. But I need to have a 7, because my y value is a 7. If I add 3, that will make 7. I need to check it. I need to work another x value over here. I'm going to do the 6. So I'm going to multiply, use our rate of change 4, times the 6, and then add 3. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 3 is 27. That's exactly what we need. So we have the right expression here. We have the correct rule. We're going to multiply 4 times x, and then add 3. And to write the equation, we just put a y equals in front of it. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher.